Hi, my name is Filippo Aka Time Fleas and welcome back to one of my tutorials. I know I don't do many of them, but I'm sure you're gonna like this short one. If you follow my work for a while, you'll know that one of my favorite styles is still shift photography. For example, in my video Tiny Sydney. is usually achieved with tilt shift lenses. But there are a few good reasons why I prefer to recreate this effect in post-production. The first one being these lenses are quite expensive and unless you have other reason to use them like architecture I don't think it's a good investment. The second reason is there are not many of these lenses so they cover only a certain amount of focal length, usually wide angle and mid-range and up to 90 millimeters while I like to have the flexibility to use it up to 400 or even 800 millimeters. And the third reason is again flexibility but of changing this focal point afterwards, so after the shot has been taken, or even, as in many of my films, to move this focal point along the image. So let's jump into it and see how we can easily recreate this effect in After Effects. Okay, first of all, let's import some footage. So the first thing is to find the best vantage point in any location. This one might work. Okay, let's import one of the clips that we shot into After Effects. This one worked nicely. So this is just some uh, traffic around the Melbourne. Let's make the composition 1080p. Now let's just find uh, the camera lens blur effect and uh, create an adjustment layer on top of the clip and apply the camera lens blur to the adjustment layer. As you can see, it kind of recreate the autofocus from a lens and you can change the blur radius to make it more and less blur. But how to decide where to have a selective focus? Here comes into play a blur map. So let's create another composition. Let's call it Blur Map. Let's create a new solid, white. And then let's just apply the gradient ramp effect. That's just gonna create, as you can see, a gradient from black to white. Let's go back to our original composition and let's just put the blur map underneath and we can even turn it off, doesn't matter. Then we go back into the adjustment layer, into the camera lens blur effect and we just choose as blur map the blur map that we just created. Now we can control the blur focus distance and the focus where we want, in this case I would say just the middle and that's it. I mean we can of course give it a bit more life so we can uh, give it some levels. Uh, probably too much. some uh, hue and saturation just to make all the colors pop and looking a bit more like a miniature city 
And then I usually just put some unsharp mask just so that the details are in focus. They pop up even more. Let's preview it. And I think the result is pretty cool. And another nice thing we could do is actually we can animate the focus part of the image. So we can just go at the beginning of the clip, for example. We can click the little clock on the blur focus distance, bring it down, and then go at the end of the clip and move it back. In this way we'll be able to animate the selective focus of the image and it's something that it can be done with a normal tilt shift lens. So this is a very simple technique that actually recreates very well the effect that you would get from the tilting part of a tilt shift lens. But there is also another technique that is called small gantic. It is a bit more an advanced technique and will be probably part on another tutorial, but just to give you an idea. This is another clip done in exactly the same way and I think it already looks pretty good, but it's not perfect. You can see the building in the foreground. This one, for example, it's in focus, but it shouldn't be. And the red tower is out of focus on the top, while it should be actually in focus. Have a look at this server that I prepared in a different way. It looks much better. But this technique will be probably in the next tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial and please feel free to ask any questions in the comment. I've actually just released my new film, Tiny Melbourne, using this technique. So go and check it out. Actually, this is a little preview.